So, yeah, that's me. Uh, it's Kitchens of the Great Midwest. So far, it's the best debut novel I've ever written. And, and it's about food. And when it comes to food, you know, most of us know we're not living in the world we were born into. There are a lot of reasons for this and a lot of ways to apprehend it. But in Kitchens, I'm most interested in the personal, about how food enables an individual to express love and assemble a family of choice. I'm also interested in tracing how we arrived at our present era in culture. I mean, I was born in 1975, which I consider to be somewhere around the apex of the better living through chemistry era, where a list of ingredients being particularly long and unpronounceable was viewed with security and perhaps even joy. Um, I was also raised in a house that cooked primarily for comfort and ease uh, to sometimes tragic results. Uh, my dad, for example, you know, an army veteran, would cook us something he called slum gullion, which I think he picked up when he was overseas. And what it was was a can of chicken noodle soup poured in a pot and um, appended, well, uh, accumulated, I don't know the exact verb, but the ending, but he went to the fridge and saw um, whatever else was in there and threw it in the pot with the chicken noodle soup. Now, there are, these days there are whole shows devoted to that kind of cooking. So I just like to think he was ahead of his time. And I'm alive today. Um, <laughs> so I, I survived it. He would also make something called whiplash, which was yesterday's spaghetti or lasagna fried. It's, it's as good as it sounds. It's the best possible food at his skill level. Now, now, my father is a man who grows three varieties of hot peppers, which is no mean trick in USDA, USDA hardiness zone 4B, where he lives. He grows two different varieties of, of heirloom of carrots and only buys chickens from a very particular local farmer. Now, how did the man who made slumgullion and whiplash evolve into someone who could be mistaken for a Silver Lake foodie? I was curious about tracing that, so when devising the narrative for Kitchens of the Great Midwest, I uh, established a character, Eva Torvald, who was born in 1989 into the hot dish and lutefisk world I was born into, and I set out to tell a story within the realm of this culinary evolution. Now, despite Eva's humble origins, you know, uh, she does become a young foodie. By age 10, She's living in West Des Moines, Iowa, and she's growing hydroponic hot peppers in her closet and selling them to local Mexican restaurants. Uh, and eventually, by the time she's 26, by the end of the book, she's worked her way up to being the elusive and successful and mysterious chef behind a $5,000 a plate pop-up supper club. Now, both of those details, the young foodie, growing her own peppers and the um, mysterious pop-up supper club at that price seemed to me like, oh, magical realism at the time I wrote the book in 2013. Now they seem like historical fiction. Um, but each chapter introduces both Eva and the reader to a new ingredient and a new character. The ingre all of the ingredients and many of the characters accumulate in the final chapter at a meal that is served. And in doing so, the book itself becomes kind of a long form recipe for a human being. There are also actual recipes in the book. Uh, many of them are inspired or adapted from a recipe book of my great grandmother's from her Lutheran church in Hunter, North Dakota. It's an early 1980s uh, recipe book and it was one that I grew up on. I was talking with um, Celeste yesterday about how cookbooks, old cookbooks, she has an old cookbook in her novel as well, are more effective than photo albums or other mediums from the past in communicating the compromises and ingenuities of the past. And Eva, as a chef, attempts to reconcile that past in her birth family, in her regional traditions, with her current era's focus on 
conscience, health, and sustainability. Now, Eva also demonstrates that when you leave home and assemble a family of choice, it doesn't have to nullify or diminish the family you came from. A major theme of my book are the families of choice we create when we leave home and discover when we attract, and, when we, and we discover who we attract by honestly asserting our love and our identity. Eva is ultimately successful because she never quits doing that. Now Eva, even before she leaves home, discovers how food communicates notions of class, identity, heritage, and community. And as my character Pat Prager says about her award-winning blue ribbon peanut butter bars, they are, I'm sorry, they are her like me. They are her love freely given. Now, Pat and, Eva, Pat and Eva both demonstrate the difficulty of committing yourself to something you love, as well as the rewards of what that commitment attracts. Now, whether if you've had lutefisk, and I hope you haven't. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I grew up with it until I was about five. Um, I hope you see yourself in Eva, her family, her family of choice. And if you do make any of the recipes from the book, I apologize in advance for the calories. Thanks.